top of the sports match zone for this Thursday. The West Indies seal a 2-0 T20 series win against Bangladesh by landing the third and final match in Guyana earlier on Thursday. Now, rain had delayed the start of proceedings, but after winning the toss and batting, the visitors posted 163 for five of 20 overs. Afif Hussain top scored with 50, while opener Litton Das added 49. Hayden Walsh Jr. was the best West Indies bowler with two for 25. In reply, the hosts stumbled on their way to the target, ending on 169 for five to win by five wickets. With 10 balls to spare, captain Nicholas Puran led the chase with a blistering 74 not out. Kyle Mears contributed 55. So uh, good performance there by the West Indies closing out the series against George and Mariah, a team rated below them in the ICC rankings. So it was a result that they needed to get. Yeah, and we've said this on the show many times. When you meet weaker teams, you are expected to defeat them. West Indies, where the T20s were concerned, they had one of their matches um, called off, cancelled, suspended because of bad weather. So they definitely had to win today to ensure that, you know, they won the entire series. I'm happy for them, you know, being able to overcome. Nicholas Puran, we've spoken for some time on this show, you know, we want to see the best of Puran, the Puran that we've seen and fell in love with initially when he now announced himself on the batting scene. So I'm happy to see him get some runs under his name. Uh, Hayden Walsh Jr. also brilliant. And I have to say there were a couple misfields and slip-ups, but you know, that's behind us. We got the win and we move forward now with confidence. Yeah, George. Not quite reputations burnished uh, for the West Indies by virtue of completing this series win, but the West Indies have been dull and inconsistent at best for so long that a series victory against any opponent is going to be enjoyed by the fans. And because of the West Indies' record in white ball cricket, no fan will sneer and say it's only Bangladesh because teams at this level have made life difficult for the West Indies uh, in the past. When you look at the individual performances over the course of these series, not many men are finding them, will find themselves knocking at the door for a, a, a upward a movement in the individual rankings where the ICC is concerned in T20 cricket. A, a, a couple may, but not, not, not many. And the abiding a point to be made is that a team like Bangladesh playing the West Indies away ought to be made to struggle. And if you look across the games that these teams have played, red ball and white ball, there is a discernible gap between the teams. And for what has happened in West Indies cricket in the recent past, that is as good as you can ask for. Show that there is a gap between you and a team who you believe you are better than, especially playing at home. And I think the West Indies would have ticked that box, if that is a box that the coaching staff and the management team had set for them to tick. Yeah, the equation changes, though, later this month, because the Indians will be tackling the Caribbean side in T20s and ODIs, uh, white ball cricket, and obviously a stiffer test for the home team. Yes, it's an, that, that's going to be a marker now because the, 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 the reasonable fan and the rational fan will say, OK, you showed me stability and you showed me improvement against an admittedly weak team, but yeah. we won't know, we won't get a good advertisement of your well-being until your match skills with a team that can hurt you. A team that on paper is better than you, a team in the rankings that's better than you, and a team man for man that's stronger. How do you cope? How do you deport yourself? How well do you do that? So the Indians are coming at a very good time, and I'm happy that this series is coming so quick yeah. after the Bangladesh series. So it's a real test of any progress that this team would have made individually, man for man, and as a collective. I think it's exactly what they need, and it's the perfect timing. So we move forward now in confidence, and Lance, I know we have a guest waiting to join us, so go yeah. ahead. Nikhil Uttam Chandani joins us now to uh, look at uh, what happened in this series between the West Indies and uh, Bangladesh. Uh, Nikhil, welcome to the Sports Mat Zone. Great to have you on. No, thanks a lot, Lance, and always good to be back and happy to discuss uh, our West Indies win as well. Yeah, so 2-0 um, uh, was the best they could have gotten because the first match was a no result because of rain. But how, how efficient were this West Indies team against the Bangladesh uh, unit that they were expected, quite honest, to, 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 to defeat? Yeah, they definitely started the series as favourites. I mean, I'm going to be a little more optimistic than George. I thought Manchester United was playing for a second. But definitely um, very okay. happy in terms of what I've seen, especially from the batting unit, to be able to chase, you know, today so so convincingly on what was a tough surface to bat on second. Um, I think I was very pleased to see, you know, the way they batted through the middle overs, that partnership between Kyle Mears and Nicholas Puran, 
85 from 51 balls to me was was excellent to see and also the way they bat in the middle i think that's something where the west Indies have struggled uh, a lot in this series 103 runs from oh, between over 6 and 15 to me was a real indication of this team growing especially against spin and i think having two left-handers which took out the likes of shakiba hassan and Obviously, Ahmed, who the other left spinner was, I think that left arm spinner, I think that helped in a big way. And, and all in all, I think a lot to build to go to India. Mm. Nikhil, the fact of the matter is it's scar tissue, my friend. Uh, the, what, what you deem to be uh, a, a rather downbeat assessment of the West Indies. Fact is that if, 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 you put, if you matched up the West Indies against Bangladesh on paper, you would have expected the results and the performances that you would have seen across both red ball and white ball, which is why I'm not cock a hoop just yet, even as I'm acknowledging that on the rung to success, on the ladder to better, the West Indies at least are climbing upwards because, of course, you can climb down the ladder. And the proximity of the India series gives me and all of us an ideal opportunity to confirm that what we would have seen over the past few weeks and what appears to be improvement, what appears to be an ability to take the game away from the opponent, what appears to be an ability to impose your will on the opponent, we'll be able to stress test those things in the India series. So taken together, I am not gaga about the performances thus yet. Uh, just yet, because I'm saying it was against inferior opposition. Inferior opposition that we've struggled against in the past. We're not struggling now, but I'm just saying that the pudding is there to be eaten and to be proven about who, how good the concoction was, about how the baked product is, finally. Yeah, I, I agree with you, George, but I just think when I see sort of the performances of this T20 team this year, yes, you look at the home series against uh, England or at the start of the year where we won, a team that obviously are showing that they're a real force to be reckoned with in world cricket. Then obviously this series against Bangladesh, we struggled against India, but I've seen enough things from the likes of a Nicholas Puran, who he was, he's struggling for runs in the ODI format. You look at his T20 performances now, 530 runs in the 11 innings in 2022, an average of over 58, striking at 150. I'm really liking what I see from him. I also like the versatility of the, the West Indies attack as well. The what Kyle Mears and Brandon King have brought to the top of the innings. I think Mears today showed again why, you know, he's, he's such a viable all-format player. And while it's not, while it's George, sorry, it's, it's not going to be easy against India, a team that just beat England earlier today. And even without Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli, Boomer and others are still going to be a force to reckon. We know, we watch the IPL, we know how much, how deep their talent pool is. I'm still optimistic in home conditions that, you know, we can, we can challenge India. I think... Maybe the bowling will be a side of things where I'll worry about. And I think Hayden Walsh Jr. is going to come into play. You look at those games, one at the Brian Lars Stadium, etc. I think he's going to be very important. I was very impressed with the control he showed, the lengths that he bowled today especially. Um, it's going to be a challenge, don't get me wrong. It's India. In any cricket you play in India, it will be always a challenge. But I think India coming to our territory as a young West Indies fan as well as analyst, I'm, I'm starting the series optimistic, especially coming off of this 2-0 win. Yeah, and just now you mentioned, you know, you'd only be a bit concerned about the bowling. Uh, what exactly from this series, you know, would you say that has affected the Windies bowlers? Is it just the selection? Do you feel as if we need another spinner? What's your take? I definitely think, you know, watching not only this T20 series, but even you look at the Pakistan one internationals, I think the death bowling side of things is always somewhere where we've struggled in the past. Uh, but one thing that I've been very impressed with is seeing Romario Shepard, the way he's come back into things. I mean... You look at that Pakistan series where he really struggled towards the death, you know, trying to find those Yorkers, etc. But in this series, only being only conceding six and a half runs per over, I think the, the reintroduction of Akimo Paul is something that they can build on. And then obviously, Odin Smith is, continues to be a work in progress. We saw Dominic Drake for the first time. And I think having Obed McCoy, who we've obviously seen really be valuable with those back of the hands, throw balls and, and others, he was going to really help. Obviously, don't forget, there was no Jason Holder in this series with his Yorkers. So... If there's one area where I think they'll really have to focus on as a bowling unit, I think it's going to be at the death. I like what Aki Hossein brings with the newer ball. And I think Hayda Walsh is showing the right signs that he can hold his own in the middle. But for me, it has to be the death overs. And I think that's what's going to separate us with the ball in terms of when we play against a formidable, formidable opposition like India. Yeah, and I know earlier in the show, we spoke about glowingly, you know, Nicholas Puran and getting to see him, you know, at his best again, as we knew before. Now that this series is over, this T20 series, can you assess, you know, just his leadership? I think actually it's just been proactive, to be honest. It seems like the team has this new injected energy. Obviously, he's a young captain. He has a lot to learn. But I love the sort of the new spirit. And I actually see it in the test team as well. You see a lot of enjoyment when these guys go to play. And I mean, win or lose, 
it's always not going to be sweet and dandy as they say in Barbados, but I, I like what I'm seeing in the field in terms of body language from the guys and also his leadership. You hear him through the stand he's very boisterous in terms of encouraging his bowlers. And obviously it's important as a captain that he leads from the front with the bat in hand. And I think the year that he's had, as I mentioned before, really, you can't ask so much more from the skipper. So I'm, I've been happy in terms of what I've seen so far, the way he's shuffled his changes, and also the way he's been happy to try things as well. We saw Odin Smith coming at number four today. Yes, it didn't work. But I like the fact that, you know, they were 24 for two in some trouble. They sent Odin Smith up early for a chance to try to hit, hit the spinners early on in the first six and make the most of the power play. So I like what I'm seeing in terms of the boldness and obviously – the proactiveness, but it's not going to be easy, especially when you play in teams like India and New Zealand later this year. It'll be a true test for Pura. Yeah, Nikhil, I want to get a comment from you on Akil Hussain, who you spoke of just now as adding some dimension to the West Indies bowling attack. But we've seen his batting ability in both white ball and red ball cricket, 100 in the four-day and a big score against in a, in a practice match with the TNT team a, a few months ago. How, how valuable do you think his batting could be for the West Indies team at that lower order? Extremely valuable. And so I think what it does also is it sort of allows the West Indies to then play a genuine bowler and not worry so much about the batting. I think no one ever would have expected. Obviously, the, the West Indian purists will know that he's scored a first class 100 and can definitely bat. But the manner in which he went about that innings in that losing cause in, against England earlier this year has shown everyone and then what he's been able to follow it up with has shown us that he really has the capabilities. And then it allows you to, in a game, to then not have to go to a Odin Smith. Maybe you could play a dominant Drake. So I think it definitely gives the West Indies a lot of flexibility. And also what I love about it is not he's just not a pure hitter. We saw in situations where Puran has been happy to send him at number five. So he also believes he can offset sort of that left-right combination and send him up in the top order. And I keep saying it. Puran has been bold and he's been happy to, to try different things in these early stages. All, of course, going to come into play for the T20 World Cup later this year. So very happy what he's done. But I think his bowling as well speaks for itself, even minus the batting with the newer ball. The just ability to the nap picking up wickets. He's, he's really a valuable member to the team. Yeah. I, before we leave the subject, uh, Nikhil, I wanted to get a, a comment from you on a topic I broached with uh, Mr. Corlett as we spoke with him, the Ghanese journalist yesterday, and the rebuilding of this West Indies team, because there are um, a lot of veterans, old faces, who are not there anymore. Bravo and Pollard have retired. Uh, Andre Russell really isn't representing the West Indies much. Uh, Chris Gale has, has gone off into the wilderness, we think. Um, <laughs> uh, your thoughts on the newer players and their appetite for the job, first of all, and the quality that they have to replace some of these players who have now gone on? I definitely think the, the appetite is there. As you said, the hunger, you can see it. And I said it, mentioned it for the test team as well as the white ball team. I see a, a brand of enjoyment on the field. There's clear want to be there. There's clear passion for, for winning games. You see a, a Robin Powell score 50. You see the celebrations back to, to the, the dugout. There's clear sort of initiative but what I will say is that, you know, we have to remember as West Indian fans, we've seen them play a fantastic series against England. Now, obviously, Bangladesh, which, as, as George said earlier, we were favourites to win. When the India series and the New Zealand series comes about, we have to, be, we have to remember that this is still a very young team. This is a new era of West Indies cricket, and there's, it's going to be a rocky road. So I think ideally we have to look at sort of that T20 World Cup, you know, whether we have to qualify or not. But we've got a plan for that World Cup coming. It's a very new team with a lot of young faces, guys that have not even played 10 T20 internationals. You look at a Dominic Drake, a very young man in the team. There are many players of that, but what they need to do is rely on the Nicholas Purans, rely on the Jason Holders who will come back in for that bit of added experience. Uh, an Odin Smith can learn from a Shepherd, those type of things. And I think once they do that, you have a CPL, an entire CPL coming up. You allow sort of to build in the right direction for that, that important T20 World Cup at the end of the year. I love what I've seen from the team in terms of morale, uh, just spirit and, and hunger. Yeah, you talk about CPL. I know you're going to be interested in this uh, topic as we move on, uh, Nikhil. So stay with us in other cricket news. Squads for this year's edition of the Hero Caribbean Premier League were announced earlier on Thursday. Explosive all-rounder Andre Russell will suit up for the Trinbago Knight Riders. Not surprisingly, as a Kolkata Knight Riders uh, all-rounder himself. While Rakim Cornwell will represent two-time champions Barbados Royals. Shea Hope has also switched teams, leaving the Royals for the Guyana Amazon Warriors, George's former team. Uh, let's have a look at the full squads of uh, the, the CPL uh, as they get ready for competition. There are the 
Trinbago Knight Riders, most successful team in the history of the tournament. Kyron Pollard, Andre Russell, Sunil Narain, Nicholas Puran, Colin Munro, Akil Hussain, and uh, some overseas uh, players, Mahish uh, Tikshana, Seifert, uh, Prasanna, and uh, Ali Khan is there as well. And uh, the rest of the squad, mostly from TNT, Tion Webster, Car Pierre, uh, Anderson, Philip, Terence, Hines, and Leonardo Julian as well. That's the Trinbago Knight Riders squad. The Barbados Royal squad has uh, quite a few overseas signings. Quinton de Kock, uh, there's Mujib Ur Rahman, and uh, also in, in that setup uh, from Barbados, uh, uh, Justin Graves. And Joshua Bishop, Devon Thomas coming over from Antigua, we said, Raheem Cornwall. Jason Holder, the former uh, captain of the West Indies team. David Miller is there as well. Obed McCoy from the Windward Islands. Kyle Mears, who is, uh, as Nickel just mentioned, pretty much an all-format player for the West Indies at the moment. Hayden Walsh Jr. is there along with the big Jamaican pacer, O'Shane Thomas. Let's look at the other squads now for the CPL. Ghana Amazon Warriors squad having the... Veteran Imran Tahir, uh, there's Tabri Shamsi as well, uh, along with other overseas players, Colin Ingram, uh, Paul Sterling from Northern Ireland, Heinrich Klassen, and uh, the rest of the squad, pretty much Caribbean based, Shimon Hetmeyer, uh, Odin Smith, Romaria Shepard, Colin, uh, that's uh, Chandra Paul Hemraj, Shea Hope moves over to the Ghana Amazon Warriors. Uh, Kimo Paul, Jermaine Blackwood, Gota Keshimoti, Vera Sami Permal, Ronsford Beaton, who cleared up his bowling action and is back into international cricket. Matthew Nandu, who is a Canada-based uh, batsman from Guyana originally, and Junior Sinclair as well. Guyana Amazon Warriors, I think five-time beaten finalists in the CPL. Jamaica Talawa squad has Rob Paul, who will likely captain the team, Fabian Allen, um, Brandon King, Kenar Lewis. Uh, they are some of the Jamaicans in, in that setup. But several overseas players as well, Sandip Lamishain, uh, there's also Imad Wasim and Mohammed Amir, uh, there's Chris Green as well, and uh, the rest of, and Miguel Pretorius, uh, the rest uh, basically from Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean with uh, Shamar Springer from Barbados, Nicholson Gordon, a fast rising pace bowler from Jamaica, Kurt McKenzie, former under 19 player, Jamie Merchant, who is coming off a good first class season, Raymond Reaper, the West Indies all-rounder also in the Jamaica Tallow squad. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, Dwayne Bravo, their captain, the defending champions, Evan Lewis, Andre Fletcher, all these three with strong international performances on their log, Waninda Hasaranga, there is uh, Pretorius, as well as other overseas players coming in, Navid, and uh, let's see, Dual Brevis as well, and uh, Navid. The rest of the squad includes Sherpain Rutherford, Darren Bravo, Sheldon Cottrell, Dominic Jake, Jakes, Joshua De Silva, Casey Carty, Jaden Carmichael, Kasim Akram, and Casey Carty, who was a part of the West Indies winning 2016 on the 19 World Cup squad. St. Lucia Kings has Faf to play C, Faf to play C, Tim David, Roston Chase, Johnson Charles, Kesrick Williams, David Wise, Azari Joseph, Kugline, Scott Kugline. There is a Mark Dial, Jeva Royal, a Jamaican spinner, Matthew Ford, Leroy Lug, Preston McSween, Larry Edwards, Akeem Ogeast, the former or recent West Indies on the 19 captain, and Rivaldo Clark is there as well for the St. Lucia Kings. Uh, so uh, pretty um, strong squads all around, and uh, there was a point made in our zone room earlier today that for the first time in a long time, these squads really are beginning to look like franchise setups and not so heavily dominated by um, players from the, the territory from which the franchise operates. Uh, Nikhil Utam Chandan is still with us. Um, your comments on that and how diversified the squads are beginning to look, Nikhil? Yeah, I definitely think you, as you, you hit the nail on the head in terms of how different we see squads. You look at the Barbados Royals, who a number of years have been made up by Barbadian-based players like Ashley Nurse, Ray Marifa, Jonathan Carter, Jason Holder, and Kyle Mears, and the list goes on and on. All of a sudden, they've sort of tried to inject some new energy after finishing bottom of the table in the last two seasons with the Davon Thomas, with the Obed McCoy, with the Rakim Cornwall. So I like how things are mixing up. Um, I think this year, obviously, TPR are going to start different to the rest, adding a Nicholas Puranta already 
uh, well, Puran and, and obviously Russell to already a, a Kyron Pollard and a Narayan, etc. But I think I love the way the other teams are, are making up. You look at the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots who won the tournament. Then to, if they do have Wenindu Hasaranga, who was supposed to play with them last year, but obviously through the international duty had to pull out. If he does come, we've already seen what he's able to do in the Caribbean. He will be a serious force to be reckoned with in the CPL. Um, I like the young players as well that they've gone with. That were Brevis, Pazi Macron, the former Pakistan and 18 captain. Um, all in all, I think St. Lucia is another team that you can really look to that can be very dangerous. And I, I think Guyana have made the finals five times for a reason. And they've also gone back to experience with the Imanta here. They've got Shamsi in. So the CPL is, is a tournament where it's extremely hard to, to pick. But obviously you look at a TKR and you think, how can you really pick, choose against them with that type of local heavyweight that they've got in terms of that, that team? Yes, TKR definitely looking extremely strong again for another season. Nikhil, any of the names there on any of the squads that would have surprised you? Um, I think maybe Raheem Cornwall, the fact that he was released by St. Lucia and then picked up by the Barbados Royals. I'm interested to see how he fits in. With a, you look at the top five with the players that they brought in and Quinton Decock, David Miller, who's had a fantastic IPL. I'm interested to see the way that they use Cornwall. I think it's a steal, to be honest, but given what we've known him to do. And I also think could feature with the ball as well. But if he does open the batting with a Kyle Mears or with a Quinton Decock, who probably will open... Um, or if you, whether he bats as a, in the lower order as a finisher, I think this could be sort of that new invention for Rakim Crowell, who could be looking at a T20 World Cup now out of the Rakini in a red ball setup and, and think, you know what, maybe I have a chance if I have a really good CPL to, to get in. Uh, Obed McCoy, who obviously dealt with injury for a Royals team, he could look at this, this opportunity and say, well, a T20 World Cup, he's in the team, let me build on it. So it's the unique opportunities for, for a lot of players in the CPL, as there always is, but with a World Cup coming at the end of the year, I think it makes it so much more important that, you know, guys really put in a good performance and, and try to put their name in the hat for, for the World Cup. Nikhil Utam Chandani, thanks for talking to us here on the Sportsman Zone. And um, we look forward to the CPL. It starts at the end of August. And uh, we think it's going to be probably better than it has ever been. Thanks, man. Cheers for having me. Yeah, we go to break. We'll have a lot more on the Sportsman Zone after this.